Yo, what's going on guys? So last leak I did leak start as an Toxic Rain Pathfinder and I did my Simulacrum strategy and a lot of people have been asking me about an update to that strategy for patch 3.21. So in today's video I want to do exactly that. But before I start I want to mention that most of my videos about Toxic Rain from last leak are still up to date. Especially the leveling guide because I don't think leveling has changed that much and day two and week one of the league because it shows you uh, exactly the example of what I did during the last league start. So this time around, you should expect uh, similar results. So uh, in a day two, you're gonna see a character that has a gear, uh, well, during day two, and uh, you can start doing simulacrums with that uh, gear. And I was able to do, I believe, around 20 waves. And then week one is, finished uh, character with a gear uh, that can let you do 30 wave simulacrums without mage blood. So to show you the changes that I would do for this leak is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my week one uh, character, then go to my POB, and then I'm just gonna import it to my POB, and I'm gonna basically update it during this video. But before I uh, start going over the changes, I want to quickly mention how the build works, just for people that haven't watched my old videos. I'm not gonna go uh, too much in details because like I said, all of my previous videos are mostly up to date. So I'm gonna mostly focus on changes in this video, but I just want to briefly talk about how the build works. So like I said earlier, this build is designed to farm simulacrums. So the main part of the build is surface hard. And that is because simulacrum waves last for around 30 seconds and this amulet gives you soul eater buff for 20 seconds when you use a valve skill. So what I would do is I would usually wait for around 10 seconds and then I would press my valgrace to have soul eater for the rest of the uh, wave. And this way you're gonna get a lot of attack speed because the way soul eater works is for every kill you're gonna get a stacking attack speed buff until the uh, end of the duration. And Toxic Rain scales a lot from attack speed. So for example, we can go to uh, configuration and there should be somewhere uh, stacks of uh, Soul Eater. And I would actually usually hit around 100 stacks at the end of the wave where usually boss would spawn. So when you are fighting boss, you can see right now I have 11 million DPS and with 100 stacks that goes up to 40 million. So <laughs> it increases your DPS by a lot. And sometimes I would have even more stacks. So it's just crazy. Uh, amulet for simulacrums. If you are not planning to do simulacrums, to be honest, you can keep the build pretty much the same. I would probably go for some kind of uh, uh, Quicksilver flasks for more mobility, and I would change amulet for uh, something uh, with plus to chaos skill gems, dexterity skill gems, and damage over time multiplier. Basically, I don't think there is anything else. And the same with Quiver. We are using Maloney Quiver because uh, the way I like to play Simulacrums is I like to level up as many gems as possible. This is also another reason why I am using Unset Ring, uh, just to be able to level up so many gems, and Maloney helps you with that. If you don't want to level up gems, just go for a Rare Quiver with uh, damage over time multi to attacks, Chaos damage over time multi to attacks, some life uh, damage to balls, and so on. And because we are using Devouring Diadem, which gives us a lot of Manor's version efficiency and Eldritch Battery, we can use a lot of auras like uh, determination, uh, vitality, defiance banner, malevolence, purity of elements for more resistances and element immunity, uh, grace with valgrace, which like I said, I am using to proc the uh, soul eater. And that's basically it. Uh, for six link, just toxic rain, uh, phantasmal for additional projectiles. And I don't really care about the perfect AOE overlap, which most of the people do, which is 39% because Simulacrum is mostly an encounter when you find monsters, your single target doesn't matter that much. So I just prefer to have uh, as good a uh, clear as possible. So I go for Phantasmal and for things like Dying Sun. So I just have a lot of additional projectiles. Uh, and there, uh, the other gems are just Empower, Awaken Avoid Manipulation, which is good because it also gives you plus one to support the Chaos Kill gems, Mirage Archer, Vicious Projectiles, and Efficacy. For mobility, I'm using Flame Dash with uh, Blink Arrow. Some people don't like to use Blink Arrow. I go for it. For defenses, we are using uh, Val Grace, and you can even go for Val Molten Shell once you have a good amount of armor. Uh, 
focus on getting a spell suppression cap. You can do it in many ways. You can do it through a passive tree. You can also do it through items. For example, here I have a spell suppression on my chest, gloves, boots, and so on. And by the way, how to craft the gloves and the chest, I do explain in my uh, one week uh, update video. So in this video, you can see in here, crafting body armor and here crafting gloves. So you're gonna know exactly how to make them. Uh, for uh, Ascendancy, I went for Pathfinder, uh, mostly because of Master Surgeon. It just gives you a ton of recovery, uh, but also some additional Chaos damage, AoE. Uh, infinite Flasks are also pretty good uh, when you're fighting Simulacrums. Very often you're gonna end up fighting Cosis or Omniphobia without monsters. So having Infinite Flasks during boss fights is also pretty good. And one big thing is also Occupying Force. Depending on the price of it, definitely I would suggest going for it if you're farming Simulacrum. It is going to give you two additional Mirage Archer, which is going to be active pretty much always because you're fighting uh, in the arena uh, encounter uh, when you're doing Simulacrum. So it's just a ton of damage. Uh, just to show you, 11 million DPS when I remove one of them, it goes down to 7 million. For more defense, I am using Progenesis, which helps you with and not getting one-shotted by preventing 25% of last life loss being taken over 4 seconds instead. And on top of that we have a ton of armor and evasion, as you can see, 95% evasion chance and uh, almost 40,000 armor. And that is mostly thanks to the Granite and Jade Flask, uh, Determination and Grace Aura, and a lot of armor and evasion on the gear. Uh, also, I am using 25% uh, reduced mana cost on one of my flasks. Uh, on top of that, I have minus mana cost on both of my rings. And that is because we are uh, attacking with Toxic Rain so fast, uh, even your Eldritch Battery and Edge Shield is not going to keep up, so you need to reduce your mana cost by a ton. Uh, and on top of that, on the belt, I do have 150% energy shield per second regenerated when there is a rare or unique enemy nearby. And most of the time, when you're fighting in Simulacrum, there is going to be one of these uh, monsters. And the last flask I am using is Forbidden Taste with Enchant used when you take Savage Hit. Uh, we need this Enchant because the way this uh, flask works is that it recovers 100% of your life when you use it. So when you are taking Savage Hit, it just instantly heals you. So the way our recovery works is that from just regular small hits, we are actually being uh, healed by Master Surgeon from uh, Pathfinder. You're going to kill so many monsters that, that your flasks are just constantly recovering your life. And on top of that, uh, when you get hit by a big hit that doesn't kill you, Forbidden Taste is going to heal you. And when you get uh, hit by a big hit that is supposed to uh, kill you, uh, very often Progenesis is going to prevent that, and then Forbidden Taste is going to heal you. So it's just a very nice synergy. The bow I am using for this build is a Crafted Hunter Bow. In one of my videos I am uh, explaining how I did uh, Crafted, so make sure to uh, watch them. It is just plus two socketed gems, attack speed, and chaos damage over time multiplier. And for the Cluster Jewels, you want to go for uh, Chaos Damage anywhere you can get it, so Unholy Grace, Unwavering the Evil, Wicked Pole, and for Medium 1, Eternal Suffering for uh, Wither Stacks, and Student of Decay for Chaos Damage, uh, Damage for Damage over time, and Chaos Resistances. And for the other one, just Student of Decay with Wicked Pole, and the same thing uh, on the other ones. So that's the version that I was using in the uh, last league. So for this league, I'm just going to convert it to 3.21 and I'm going to go over all of the changes that I would do. So first, the most important change is that now uh, Master Surgeon, instead of uh, giving us uh, life recovery whenever we use flask, now it makes your uh, life flask uh, not be removed when your unreserved life is filled. So basically we have enduring mode on our flask, life flask, which gives, gives us a lot of recovery. But in our setup, we are actually not using a life flask. So you can completely remove it and go for maybe uh, some additional flask effectiveness or master uh, alchemist, but we are aiming at immune anyway, so it doesn't really do that much. So what I would actually do instead is I actually would go for master surgeon, but I would remove a forbidden taste and just go for a regular uh, life flask. So uh, probably eternal flask with a mod just that just increases the 
uh, amount recovered. So let's say this one and maybe like a bleed immunity. So that would be the flask that I would use. Uh, and also Master Sergeant, like I said, no longer gives us a recovery when one of your flasks is being used, but that now is moved to the flask mastery. So in here, I would remove it and I would go for recover 4% of life when you use flask. So instead of 6%, now it's 4%, but it's still very good and it is main source of our recovery. For other ascendancy uh, points, now we get 30% uh, magic utility flask effect, which actually makes me think that maybe uh, removing progenesis or dying sun could be a good idea if you have uh, some other magic flask but i would probably still keep them they just provide a lot of aoe and a lot of defense so uh, it's not that bad we still have uh, basically infinite flask charges but now nature's reprisal gives us a 25 percent chance to inflict wither on hit and increase the effect of wither so because of this, you no longer need Eternal Suffering to have uh, some Wither stacks. Most of the Toxic Rain builds use some kind of Ballista setup to uh, use to apply Wither stacks. We are not using it in here, so I would always use Eternal Suffering for 6 Wither debuffs. But now, thanks to the Nature's Reprisal, we will be able to have up to 15 uh, Wither stacks. So in configuration, I would change this to 15, so we actually gained a lot of damage. And you can still go for Eternal Suffering if you want to have a, a quicker, uh, you want to have a six stacks much quicker. Uh, but you most of the time are going to inflict a lot of Wither with just this anyway, because we are shooting with Toxic Rain so fast. Uh, most of the time we're going to have 15 stacks anyway on the target. And especially thanks to one of the new Masteries. So for Chaos Mastery, now we can go for 5% chance that you inflict Wither. Uh, when you inflict Wither, you inflict 15 debuff stacks instead. So this is a very good mastery for just, from time to time, a higher amount of Wither stacks. And for the second one, I would go for recover 1% life per Wither uh, debuff on enemy you killed, which gives us a ton of recovery on uh, kills. So if you kill something that has 15 Wither uh, stacks, you just recover 15% of your life. That's actually insane our recovery uh, becomes insane with uh, this update so we still have four percent life when you use a flask we have uh, uh, life on kill so you actually don't even need uh, this point i would usually go in here for some life spell suppression and life on kill but we no longer need here so you can remove it if you have enough spell suppression uh, so go here but i actually would need it and we are still using the uh, water eye with uh, life on hit so that's another uh, region and instead of taste of haze i would go for uh, life flux so that's even more consistent uh, life recovery so this build just straight up with insane recovery one thing you also might have noticed is that now we have minus three mana reserved and that is because we lost we lost some uh, mana reservation efficiency nodes so from evasion mastery there was a mastery here that would uh, gives you mana reservation efficiency for uh, grace now it gives 15 percent chance to suppress spell damage and uh, so it's still pretty good obviously it's good for uh, our spell suppression uh, but yeah now we lost some mana reservation so how to fix that so first of all you can go for more uh, mana reservation efficiency on uh, jewels so for example this one has three percent i believe you can go up to four percent you could go for a second one like that in here, so that would be a more mana reservation. You could go for a small cluster jewel uh, that gives 6% mana reservation per point. So that would be something like uh, this. So here you can see reservation efficiency, 6% uh, per point. So you, you can go for something like that. But what I would actually do is, I actually didn't even realize that I'm not doing uh, it in uh, on this build, is just use Enlighten on uh, on your helmet. So level 3 should be enough. Defiance banner, you would have to move to something like body armor. And let's move Malevolence and Valgrace to this setup. So Malevolence. Well, rice. And remove it here. 
So now as you can see, I have plenty amount of mana. So you can do this for linking your helmet. It actually is still even good with uh, level 1 Enlightened, I mean level 2 Enlightened, so mana reservation should not be that big of an issue. For the Life Mastery, I would go for probably just 50 additional uh, life. And another caster you might want to go for is this one, Multishot, which gives us plus 1 additional projectiles. Especially early on. Uh, when you don't have that many projectiles from things like uh, Dying Sun and Phantasma Toxic Rain, uh, I would definitely suggest going for it. Later you might not need it, but it also gives a decent amount of attack speed. Also for mastery, you can go for attack speed per enemy at close range. The Adrenaline actually has been uh, confirmed it is uh, removed. It's no longer going to be uh, in the game, so uh, I would probably go for something like this. The second new plus one arrow, Master Fletcher, is probably too far. Maybe if you need some uh, additional spell suppression from here, then I would consider traveling over here, maybe like in early game. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can also go for it. Uh, if you would go here, you probably would have to remove some life nodes. So maybe from here, maybe this one. The only reason why I was using this one is because I needed the energy shield to be able to cast uh, Determination. If you go for the chest for with the uh, energy shield and evasion as a base, you wouldn't need that, so you can remove it. Uh, so you can get some additional points, as you can see this is level 92, so with this that would be 96. So if, if you would be high level, uh, you could still go for maybe even in here. And the one uh, last thing is spell suppression. So as you can see here, now I have only 90%, but if you are at full life with this plus 10%, you actually would be still at 100%, so if you take this in here, it goes up to 100%. Obviously, we are not always at 100% life, uh, but with our recovery, we are pretty much always uh, at full life. And also, to help with that, you could even go for uh, life mastery. You count as full life when you have 90% of maximum life of above to be basically have this almost always. So that's something you can go for. And obviously, if you just can get additional 10% spell suppression from uh, somewhere else, maybe from somewhere on your gear, for example, on my body armor, I believe this is 19% is tier 2, so you can go for tier 1. Uh, you can get some uh, more special spell suppression somewhere else. So that's, that's basically it for uh, this version. Now I want to go over the cheaper version, so the day 2. So I did import a uh, tree from the uh, day 2 version of the build and the main difference is, as you can see, we are not going top of the tree and that is mostly because the reason why we are going top is for more uh, uh, aura reservation efficiency because we use uh, Devouring the Adam and in here, as you can see, I am not using it still because Devouring the Adam is pretty expensive helm. It's probably going to be even more expensive this league. So this is the version I would do on this build, so we would not use uh, as many auras. Here you can see some gems that I was just leveling. Uh, so the gems that I was actually using is uh, Val Grace still, Steel Skin, uh, Flame Dash, Blood Rage, Malevolence, and that's basically it. So, so here you can see the uh, six link setup, even with um, power level 2, that is good enough. So for Auras, I was just using Malevolence and the uh, Val Grace uh, in here. So uh, for the tree, I went more to the uh, bottom for the uh, Cluster Jewel setup and here for some additional life. Spell Suppression, because I still didn't have Spell Suppression on my gear, so I was using Carcass Jack, Gloves without Spell Suppression and so on. Uh, for ring, I was using Mark of Submission with Despair socketed in because the rings with Despair on hit are actually pretty expensive early on. So this is a nice way to get your uh, spell suppression, I mean uh, your uh, Despair on hit early on. Dying Sun usually is actually not that expensive, so I was able to buy it uh, for cheap very early. And because we are not using the uh, the helmet, the Varang the Adam, I am using Enduring Mana Flask. And obviously a life flask I would use now uh, the, uh, without the instant recovery, just with increased recovery with the new ascendancy. So let's convert it in here. So for three, I actually wouldn't change uh, that much. I probably would keep it exactly the same. I would just change uh, the mastery to the new one. So recover 1% life per uh, withered enemy 
and here I would go for recover life. Uh, here you can go for just additional life or mana uh, flasks. If you are not using the uh, purity of elements, you need some kind of ailment immunity. So I would uh, suggest using remove a random elemental element when you use a mana flask and just spam mana flask uh, very often. You could even remove master surgeon and go in here. So remove elemental elements when you use the flask. That is just nice uh, uh, pseudo ailment immunity before you get your uh, true element immunity with uh, purity of elements. And here again, 15% chance for spell suppression. For life, you can go for uh, you count as the full life when you have 90% uh, life. And that's basically it. Evasion mastery, 100% more evasion. You can, like I said earlier, you can rem remove eternal suffering, so go for wicked pull. And that would be basically it. And the last thing I want to talk about are changes to the Simulacrum strategy. I will do this league. And by the way, if you are wondering, I am not going to league start us this build. I am probably going to play uh, something off meta like uh, called the Reap Inquisitor. And the reason why I don't want to play this build is because not because I think it's weak. I actually think Toxic Rint, uh, Pathfinder is very strong this time around. I was actually even considering league starting it, but I just have been playing uh, Toxic Green so many times in the past, I just want to play something different, and I also have been farming Simulacrum uh, for such a long time, I just want to farm something else. Uh, and uh, by the way, I'm gonna make uh, another video about some of the other uh, league star strategies. But for Simulacrum strategy, the most important thing is that Endless Heist now has been changed. So basically you cannot do Endless Heist anymore. So what I would do instead now is I would uh, go for one of the two things. So either I would go for uh, blighted maps. So I would go for white blighted maps with uh, Chaos Recipe, which works similarly to Endless High Strategy. You just farm uh, blighted maps instead and you just get a lot of jewelry from there and get a currency this way. Or I would go for Heist, but without Endless Heist. So I would just buy contracts, do regular heist, do high level blueprints even, and that would basically be another strategy. And one mistake that I did last time is actually doing endless heist for too long. So I would actually suggest going for logbooks as soon as you can. And for logbook, you actually don't need Zerfi's heart. So pretty much with this gear, uh, without Baloney, going for something like Chaos Damage over time, and uh, without Zerfi, just Chaos Damage over time or plus level 2 gems, you can easily start doing uh, logbooks, which is actually what I did for a little bit last time. So you can see in here, I even uh, made a video uh, in between day 2 and week 1, how to do logbooks, because I was farming them for a little bit, but I should have been farming them much earlier, probably around day 2. And with that, you can start uh, doing some logbooks or some currency, and once you have good enough gear that you can do maybe like 25 waves or something of simulacrum then you start uh, doing simulacrum so that would be my strategy maybe even consider not doing simulacrum just continue doing logbooks logbooks are just insane and leveling gems now in simulacrum is not as good as it was in the past because now uh, five ways uh, give a ton of xp to gems so uh, usually leveling gems uh, now doesn't give as much currency as it used to be, used to give so uh, logbooks are looking even better because of this so that's gonna be it for this video thanks for watching and see you next time